Hey, what's up? This is Viswesh from JavaScript Store. In this video, I'll be talking about how to stream tweets with Socket.io. Now, what is Socket.io? Back in the day, if you remember, if you were to uh, build a real-time application to reflect the data at that point of time, you would set up some kind of polling interval from the front end to retrieve data at a specific interval, a recurring interval, to keep fetching data, and, ba and you basically get the data and keep updating your view. But with Socket.io, you don't really need to do all that. All you need to do is set up your backend instance. Uh, you know, you create a new instance of Socket.io in the backend, and then in the front end for all of your clients, you basically create an instance of the Socket.io client, which is provided by Socket.io, and that's about it. So with that particular setup, you could pretty much emit data from the back end and all of your listeners in the front end would basically just listen for uh, incoming data. And when they are informed about data, they can pretty much update their view automatically. So that takes care of you know removing all those boilerplate of setting intervals and clear interval. And it was just clumsy. But Socket.io, it, uh, you know, it really enables you to write uh, awesome and maintainable and scalable web applications for real-time solutions. All right, so let's actually build a solution to better understand what Socket.io actually is. So right in front of you is their Socket.io website. Uh, so maybe we could actually create a solution, a real-time application, which is similar to the one right in front of you. So by the looks of it, it looks like it's a mini app, uh, which basically uh, you know just keeps on rendering data, uh, rendering tweets about Socket.io and JavaScript as they are created in real time. So maybe we could actually replicate that, all right? So let's get started. Let's talk about the stack uh, which we'll be using to create the replication of this particular uh, mini app. So for the backend, uh, we could actually, you know, since it's going to be a node application, let's use Express. Express will be our uh, web server and then in the front end let's use react why react well it looks like react is going to be uh, the prime uh, javascript view library for uh, the next couple of years so why not react all right so we have react in the front end and then we have express in the back end and also we'll also be using a uh, oss module uh, npm twitter module so with this particular NPM module, what you can actually do is, instead of worrying about all of the boilerplate code to, and also to read the documentation from Twitter on you know, creating APIs and creating their endpoints, you could actually use this OSS module and uh, just provide, that, uh, provide, uh, provide the Twitter model with your consumer key, consumer secret, access token, uh, token key, and your access token secret, and that's about it. So with that, you basically have a lot of uh, you know helper methods right uh, down below, and it, it really speeds up your development. And they take care of all their uh, you know all the hard work, and we basically just use their convenience methods to you know be productive and cre actually create a solution out of it. All right. So the first thing which you would want to do is go ahead and go into Twitter application management portal. Uh, you can go there by going into https apps.twitter.com and then over there create a new application and once you actually create a new application you'll be provided with all the keys once twitter creates all the keys for you you basically take it and we're going to be passing later to uh, the new twitter and since we're going to be passing all of the keys as configs to the uh, twitter npm module and then we are going to use their convenience method to set up streams so i would also like to point you to uh, you know the documentation, the Twitter NPM modules documentation, right up at the bottom, they have this uh, beautiful streaming API. So after setting up a Twitter instance, we basically come in over here, and uh, streaming tweets is as simple as uh, you know calling their convenience method and passing which term we want to actually search on. And uh, we, you know there are two ways you can actually listen you know you can actually consume this particular api you could either listen on their data and error uh, events or you can also pass callbacks to it you know uh, this is another way to do it all right so let's get started this is a create react app so if you do not have create react app globally installed go ahead install it npm 
install create react app dash g that will install it for globally for you and then go ahead and uh, spin up a new instance of uh, create react app that will basically create all the uh, scaffolded code for you so once you have everything created uh, you know once the create react app uh, the old process gets through you will be uh, presented with uh, you know this particular folder structure you will have node modules public src app css js and you know pretty much everything whatever you're seeing on the screen right now except server and components so for the server uh, let's let's actually start with the back end and then we'll go to the front end uh, to create all those cards right so for the back end we have, uh, since it's going to be an Express application, we basically require Express, require Socket.io, and then body parser for uh, parsing requests coming in through post. And we're also setting a port. And finally, the most important thing which uh, you guys need to pay attention to is these two lines. Num line number 10 and 11 is very important. So what we are basically doing is we, uh, in line number seven, we created a uh, new instance of express so here in a uh, server we pass the uh, instance which we created the express instance into the HTTP uh, server right and then we take that server and pass it into socket so that socket and the instance the server which we have created they can actually coexist right so once we create the uh, socket your connection, we basically pass it into the routes. So I, what I've really done is I've basically refactored all of my code to take all of my routes and I basically threw it in tweets.js so that it's easier to maintain. Okay. So right here in tweets.js, the first thing, like we talked about, we need to require Twitter, uh, which is the NPM module. And uh, like the documentation has suggested us, I went ahead and I'm instantiating a new Twitter now we have a twitter instance so the first thing which we will be doing is when the connection is established right so uh, like i've talked about before uh, with socket io you would actually be uh, provided with events when things changed in the library so in this case when the socket io connection actually establishes you will be notified if you listen for connection so what we do is when the connection is established we basically re retain a socket for post processing and then we start the stream okay so let's see what the stream function does so the stream function it pretty much just follows whatever is in the documentation um you know let's just go ahead and twitter.stream and then we want to filter on the search term and then the default search term is javascript all right so when the uh, data comes in for tweets related to javascript we basically send the message and send the message what it does is it emits the connection it emits the data uh, on the uh, socket connection so what actually happens is when the listeners uh, you know if they actually listen for tweets they will be uh, provided with message which is basically the data and they can do whatever they want okay so great so now that we have the uh, back end out of the way let's go look at the front end now front end since it's a create react app it all starts with app.js so as you can see uh, the class app extends component and then we have this tweet list component let's go ahead and uh, go into tweet, tweet list component and see what's going on there the tweet list component it does the uh, you know i'm basically setting up all the handlers for uh, the change you know there will be a text field for users to type in search term like you know which uh, search term they want to listen on the twitter stream so i basically handle all of that uh, the usual and the most important thing is to set up the socket of your client so in component did mount lifecycle hook what i've done is i've created a socket constant and then i'm basically passing the localhost 3000 that is where our uh, uh, react server is running i pass it into the socket of your client so with this we can basically listen on data you know the tweets which are actually being published and emitted from the backend now that's all it takes so what we have pretty much done out here is uh, so far as in the backend we have set up uh, socket io and then we are publishing data we are basically emitting data as the data flows in and then from our clients we are listening on tweets and then uh, as the data comes in i'm just updating the uh, state by calling this dot set state and then providing a newly created array that's about it guys so with that 
we'll be able to listen on tweets which are created real time. Let's go ahead and uh, start up the server. So now that the server is started, now let's go ahead and go into our server and uh, you know kickstart our server. All right, our server is up. Let's go into the front end now. All right, look at that. So let's actually you know use uh, the uh, simulator to view our application in iPhone 6. All right, look at that. So we have a first tweet which basically flew in and uh, as the uh, new tweets come in, the uh, UI just basically gets updated. So to recap, you learned how to stream tweets with Socket.io. So that brings us to a conclusion of this video. If you have any question, feel free to drop a comment and I'll be glad to reply to your comments. With that, I'll see you all in the next video.